Hello everyone, welcome to video 5 of chapter 7. In this video, we will go through the primer duo algorithm and uh, the goal is to find feasible solutions to the dual problem. So the video will be structured in the following way. So we will go through the example the example that we started in the previous video and we put this as um, to show how the algorithm works out and then before we do the steps we will first summarize the algorithm the algorithm will be explained and then we'll apply it to the example one step at a time okay so let's get started so this is the dual problem we express things in this tabular form so from taken from last video so the destinations and the origin and these are the cost and uh, this is what's available at the origin that's the demand okay so we know the for the dual problem the constraints are ui plus vi shall be less than or equal to the ci uh, cij so ui vj add up shall be less than the cij okay okay so step one so the algorithm will be um in this nice cyan color if it's in this color that's the algorithm then we apply it to the example in it will be in black okay so step one I would construct an initial solution for the dual by setting the following. I will set ui to be the minimum of uh, cij going through all the j's. And I do this for each i. And then for the vj's, this will be set to be the minimum among all i's of the c i j minus u i and then i go through all the j's so if you set it like this and then you know for every u i and v j and uh, then you know u i plus v j will be less than c i j that constraint will be satisfied okay so let's see how we carry this out in our example, now it's in the so, okay. so following the algorithm, U1 would be the minimum of uh, all the costs in the same row. So 3, 5, 7, which is 3. And U2 will be the minimum among the second row, its corresponding row. So it's 4. Once you have set up the U1, U2, now we can set the Vs. Let's go through V1 v1 by this definition will be the minimum of the first row here and then um, subtracting the corresponding u value okay so i have three minus three because this is three this is four now and four minus four which is zero okay. and then for v2 is the same i will take the five minus three and seven minus four and to find the minimum of them, which is 2. And V3 would be 7 minus 3 and 11 minus 4, the minimum of those two, which is 4. Okay, so we have an initial set of value for the UIs and the VJs. Okay, so we are now marking these values in the table in the so the V1 is 0, V2 is 2, V3 is 4, and U1 and U2 are the side. Okay, so with this marking, you know that the constraint UI plus VJ less than CIJ is always satisfied. Now let's look at step 2. For step 2, we will now form a distribution problem. The distribution problem will have the capacity k i j as follows. So k for i j will equal either to infinity or to zero. 
and um, following this rule. So if the UI minus VJ exactly equal to CIJ, then I put the capacity to be infinite. That means from the destination uh, from the origin oi to the destination dj there is a link you can ship and the amount you can ship is unlimited and then otherwise um, i would have ui plus vj strictly less than cij and if that is the case and you set the capacity to be zero and this means they are not linked, the OI and the DJ, and nothing can be shipped through that. So it's no link between them. Okay, so let's see um, in our example, and uh, how would that be? So we will be marking um, the linked position with a big circle, empty, where the inside we will fill in later on when we solve the problems. We'll fill in the solution x i j. Okay, so let's check. So for the for this position here, three plus zero is three. So we put a circle. This is linked. And then for here, three plus two is five. It's linked. And for this one, three plus four is seven. So this is also linked. Now go to row 2. For this position, so 4 plus 0 is 4, so this is linked. And then here, 4 plus 2 is 6, which is strictly less than 7, so this is not linked. And 4 plus 4 is 8, less than 11, so this is not linked. And those that are not linked, I do not put a big circle. Okay, so... um. That's the notation. So this notation basically says that we have a distribution problem, um, which we can write out now. Wherever you are linked, the capacity is infinite. And wherever you are not linked, the capacity is zero. So I have the problem like this. Infinity, 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 zero, zero. Okay, so that's O1, that's O2, and that's D1, D2, and D3. Okay. Now, step three in the algorithm, and uh, this color is an algorithm. So now we attempt to solve this distribution problem. So recall that we spend the whole chapter 7.1 in solving distribution problem is to prepare us ready for this moment. Now we know what to do. Okay, so we say we attempt to solve this. Let's see. Okay, let's see. Let's we let try to solve it. So the in this tabular form, the capacity infinity, infinity, infinite zero, infinite zero. Okay. And that's what's at the origin O1, origin O2. That's the demand D1, D2, and D3. Okay, so let's see, analyze this. Let's look at an origin 2. For origin 2, it is only linked with D1. Not here, not D2, not D3. And it has 50 units to send out and it needs 20 units. So it would make sense that we try to ship 20 units here, which will give this a surplus, okay? So we ship 20 units for destination one or from O2. Then once you ship that, then you know here you would put zero because nothing to ship, even though they are linked. Okay, once that's done, let's move to D2. Here, only origin 1 is linked to it, and I need uh, 25 units. And then I have 30, so I have plenty, so let's shift 20 pi units. And so the demand here is met. Also, the demand here is met. Okay. Now let's look at D3. In D3, um, the demand is 35, and it's only linked to origin 1. 
Origin 1, I already shipped 25 units, so it has only 5 units left. I can only put 5 here. So total in all, I would have shipped 5 units to D3, which means there are 30 units that's unmet demand. So we marked here in red. So we see this initial attempt um, and has left us with unmet demand and this solution is actually not feasible so more iterations will be needed okay so um we discussed the solution here in this tabular form because this will be the same form as um, for chapter 7.1 when we talked about the distribution problem but it's a bit annoying to have to rewrite a tabular for it. Um, remember in the previous page, we marked in the tabular of the dual problem with big circles. So we can also mark everything there directly inside the circle as follows. So that's the previous table with the circles. And then we fill in zero in this circle, 25 in this circle, five here and then 20 in this circle, okay? And then we mark the S here to show the surplus, and we mark red 30 here to show that there's unmet demand, okay? So in, in from now on, we will just use this tabular form. We will not rewrite it again. So it seems like um, we have unmet demand and the problem is stuck. So, Let's put in some label marking um, as uh, to check where we get stuck, okay? So we see we have surplus here in row two. And then let's go check the row two for each column to see which of them I can um, further um, transport more of the supply. Here I see I can increase this one. So I would mark two here in the column one to say that's linked with the row two. Okay, so this can be further increased. Okay, now let's see um, this column here, which row in particular, the remaining row here, can this be decreasing to compensate the increase here? Well, I can't do it because it's zero and I cannot make this negative. Okay, so I'm stuck here. I cannot mark further. That remains the only marking. Okay, now let's record. We see that we are stuck at C1 and R2 and the problem right now is not feasible. Okay, so here comes the next part of the algorithm 3A. If the problem is not feasible, and then I would define the corresponding set for indexes rho and C, where it is get stuck. Okay, so for our problem, I see that I am stuck at row 2 and uh, column 1. So R contains 2, the set only one number, and the set C contains 1, only one number. Okay, and these informations will be passed on to the next step, which we will continue in the next video. Okay, hope you enjoyed this one. I'll see you next time.